Hey, so in this round, I'm testing flicker and sound levels, and I'm also sharing my feedback on what panels drive you insane when you stand beside them for 20 minutes. Hey guys, Alex here from alexfergus.com and we're up to round six of my 2021 Red Light Therapy Body Panel Series. So in this round, we're looking at flicker and sound levels from these 12 Red Light Therapy panels behind me. In a way, this is the second part when determining if the Red Light Therapy panel is safe to use. We've already looked at the EMF levels and some of those panels were, hey, look, let's try and avoid them. Others were perfectly fine. If you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link to it below. Uh, in this part, we're looking at flicker, whether that flicker effect could be causing the stress on the body and also the sound levels. Now, sound levels, a lot of people don't really care about it until you get a panel that is very loud or puts out a horrible sound. And um, there is one panel behind me that does tick those boxes. So if you haven't experienced a bad panel, when you get one, you soon realize, oh, this is horrible. So what I'm trying to do in this, in this round is show you what panels you want to look out for. And of course, we'll be using my flicker meter to test if these LEDs are emitting any flicker. So hang tight, not only will I be testing flicker, I'll also be using my decibel meter to test the sound levels. Uh, and then we're gonna rank these panels from best to worst performance. After that, we're gonna tally up the scores and add it to my overall standing. If you're new here and this is the first video you've watched, I highly recommend going back to the start of the series and you can work your way through. If you have been following, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, be sure to hit subscribe because I still have four more rounds before we announce the winner. By the way, if you did wanna buy any of these panels, uh, be sure to use discount code Alex. You'll save anything from $25 through to 15% off the retail price. So it's quite a big saving. Okay, before we start ranking these panels, I should quickly mention, if you're wondering what Flickr is and why, why you may want to be concerned about it, I have got an article on my website over at alexfigures.com. I'll put a link to that below. I should mention that you want to pay attention to the sound because like I said, you're standing by these panels three, four, five times a week for 20 minutes at a time. If these panels annoy you, if one of them really annoys me, then you're gonna want to know about it. Now, when I'm testing for flicker, there's two metrics I'm looking at. I'm looking at the frequency of the flicker, which is measured in Hertz, which is how many times it's turning on and off. And then I'm looking at the uh, flicker percent, which is how intense that drop off is. So ideally you'd see no flicker, no Hertz, no percent change. A bad uh, flicker percent will be really high. It's a full on off. When it comes to scoring these panels, what I've done is if any panel has had flicker, then automatically they're at the bottom, the, the, the lower performers. Then I rank everyone based on their sound. A lot of the figures I've got on the sound are quite similar. There's only like half a decibel in between them. Now what I've done with panels that have similar sound readings, I've grouped them together to make it a little bit more fair with the scoring system. So in last place, remember this is the worst performing panel, we had the Rug Pro. Now, the Rug Pro had flicker, yes, and it also came in at 55.4 decibels. It's not the loudest panel out here. There are panels that are louder than that. To put things in perspective, ideally you wanna be in the low 50s. 55 isn't like extremely bad. It is loud, but it's, uh, it's more the flicker that's meant the Rug is at the bottom. In 11th place was the Red Rush 720 Classic. Now, between the Rug Pro and the Red Rush, I can say that these were the only two panels that had flicker, which is great. In my 2019 body kit comparison video, quite a lot of the panels had flicker. So now we have 12 panels here and only two of them have flicker. So that's a great advancement. The consumers are asking about flicker and demanding they want panels without flicker. And in turn, the companies are adapt. That's what's great about business, huh? And remember the Red Rush 720 is a very old panel that was included in my 2019 comparison series. So if you drop that out, out of all these new panels, only one out of 11 has flicker. So that's good to know. So yes, the LEDs in the Red Rush 720 have flicker. The sound was a little bit better than the Rug. Uh, it came in at 54.5 decibels. Remember the Rug was 55.4. That leaves 10, and now all 10 of these panels have no flicker, which is great. So what I've done is just simply rank them from highest sound to lowest sound, working my way up. Obviously the best panel is the quietest, right? In ninth place, I actually have two panels in ninth equal. One of them is the Blue Blocks Hive, and the other is the Juve 3.0. Both of these were above 60 decibels from a sound point of view. It's quite loud. It's not, oh my God, I need ear earplugs, but if you're standing three or four or five inches from these panels, 
it does sort of get to you. And also if you're running these in the background in a room, like if you have it in an office and someone else is working on it, it's a little bit irritating. When I review these panels independently and publish those videos on my YouTube channel, not only do I test and share the decibel readings, I give my comments about what the sound is like and sometimes I even include a few seconds of the worst. So you can get a you can get an idea of what it sounds like, all right? Most of the panels these days are pretty good. It's just a dull background work. Sometimes there's some panels that are really annoying. And one of these panels is the Juve. And I'm not picking on Juve, I'm just being real. Like I test and use a lot of panels. I've, I've still got Juves that I have, have set up in my home. Some of my family use Juve panels. I've got nothing against Juve, they changed my life, right? In terms of health and wellness and recovery when I first started using the Juve uh, 1.0. But when you run this, it's like this higher pitched, quite loud, pulsing sort of work. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Yeah, I'll bring the camera in and you can um, you can listen to it for yourself. <sighs> now, if you listen closely, there is a bit of a pulsing to the fan. And it almost sort of like reverberates, like it, it sort of resonates on itself. And, and if you have it running after like a minute or two or three, you start noticing these patterns and it, Honestly, it really, it really does bother me. Every time I've used this panel, I'm like, oh. Um, and if you're using it for 20 minutes, it becomes quite, um, quite pronounced. Like I said though, it's a lot louder than the other panels. 62, I think it was 62 decibel bells. All of the other panels, except for the Blue Blocks Hive, are below 60 decibel bells. And in fact, some are below 50 decibel bells, so. Now, I don't know if that did it justice. Uh, it may have been too hard to pick up through the camera, so you may just have to take my word for it, uh, but I can confirm that the decibel bell reading of 62.1 was the, the loudest out of all these panels I tested. Now, is this gonna be a deal breaker? Like, if the Juve was the best panel overall, but it had this wood one issue, would you avoid it? I mean, it's entirely up to you, right? That's what I'm trying to do with this video, just present as much information as possible to help you make a decision. Whether you care about sound or EMF or Flickr, I don't know, it's entirely up to you. Me personally, having tested a lot of panels, um, it, the Juve thing does bother me. The sound thing with the Juve does bother me. And it would be enough to say, yeah, I, I'd rather use a different panel. So that's why Juve has come in at ninth equal uh, with the Blue Blocks Hive. Remember the Blue Blocks Hive, doesn't sound as bad as the Juve, but it's still very, very loud, above 60 decibels. All right, now there's eight more panels remaining. Now the bottom, one, two, three, four, the bottom four of these eight are all closely related from a decibel reading point of view. The, uh, out of this group, the highest was 53.2 and the lowest was 51.7. So you've only got 1.5 decibels in them. In this group, we have the red light rising advantage 900, with 53 decibel bells. We had the Biomax 600 with 52 decibel bells. We had the Light Path LED uh, with 50, just under 52 decibel bells. And then the Mito Pro 1500, which is also just under 52 decibel bells, 51.7 to be precise. So that leaves four. Now out of these four, we have one clear winner, which I'll get to last. But there's three that again group very, very closely. There's only half a decibel bell between them. We have the Sido LED uh, Triplex with 50 decibel bells. We have the Gemberred Reboot with 49.7 decibel bells. And then we have the Solbasium Optics 180 with 49.6. So all of those, those three all get the same score because effectively it's, it's pretty much the same decibel bell reading. And that leaves one, and that's this one. The Infrared Max. Now, not only did they have no flicker, but they had the lowest sound reading by far. Their sound reading was only 47.5. To put them in perspective, uh, the second place, all those panels were up around 50 or just under 50. So it's like two and a half decibel bells quieter than the rest. Now I should also mention, it's quite a nice, soft, soothing sound. It's not irritating like the Juve. Uh, it's just this nice, quiet, white noise uh, sound that you'd expect to hear from a well-built machine, right? All of these panels have fans in them because they put out such high uh, irradiance figures. So the fan cools the, the, the chips inside. Uh, without the fans, you can't put out the same amount of power. Now you can actually buy fanless panels, but the power or the irradiance figures go right down. 
So, congratulations, Infraredi. You've come out with um, a well-designed panel, which is quite interesting because if you look at this panel, it looks similar to the Solbasium and also the Cyto LED. But just to show that even if they look the same on the outside, uh, we've seen already how the radiance and wavelengths, all those EMF levels are all different between them. But we had a 47.5 decibel, a 49.6, and then a 50.1. So there's a bit of variety in the, in the decibel readings with those panels as well. All right, now we've got the rankings from first through to 12th. What we can do is update the scores for our overall standings. Now I'm gonna pull up the scoreboard and let's see how we're looking after six rounds. Uh, we can see Mido Pro 1500 and Biomax 600 remain in first equal. Um, however, Infraredi with that win in the sound and flicker round have, um, yeah, previously there were nine points behind the winners. Now they're only three and a half points. So they've done very good and they're back in the, in the running uh, with still three or four more rounds to go. So. Still really anyone's game, but it is interesting that after six six rounds, we have the Mito Pro and the Biomax neck and neck. Who would have thought, huh? Um, beneath them, we have, uh, beneath the infrared, we have the Solbasium Optics 180. Big gap there between um, them and the top three. But then between fourth and sixth, seventh, there's only, there's only eight or nine points there. So it's still pretty close in the, in the middle of the pack. When we drop down to the bottom, you see that um, the Juve suffered again and they're back down to ninth place. Uh, and the Blue Blocks Hive are rock bottom on 12th. All right, so that's it for this round. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you have, if you've got any questions, or if you wanna see any more data, be sure to head over to alexfergus.com because I'll be updating the blog that runs uh, in conjunction with this video series, and I'll make sure all the data is over there, as well as all the latest score charts and um, uh, standings. So, the next video we have, round seven, is where I look at customer care, warranty, returns, all that sort of thing. Um, it is quite a diverse playing field when we look at that. Uh, it's quite a range of, of warranties and, and trial periods. So uh, you're gonna wanna check out that video, especially if you are spending you know thousand dollars on one of these panels. You, you want to know you get the support and the warranty period that you deserve. So be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when that video is live. Uh, like I said, if you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Any questions, leave them below. I'll see you soon.